Hello and welcome back to the Health and Harmony Goals podcast. We're doing things a little bit differently today because our new mama bee is just a little bit busy and couldn't record with me today. So I thought I would change it up and interview my hubby. <laughs> this is, um, well, hubby is Josh. I'm sure you guys have heard me speak about him for a for a while now so it's quite cool that you can meet him so I don't know if you want to just introduce yourself how's it going guys and girls I'm Josh and I'm Roxy's hubby <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah, as you can tell this can be quite a candid um chilled one but the reason I wanted to interview him is because he's gone through quite a massive shift in his life and I think it's been such an interesting transition and transformation just watching from my point of view but also from his point of view um so basically he did a program called 75 hard i don't know if you guys have heard of it before but if not i mean he'll get into specifics later sorry my dogs are going crazy in the background um but i think the, the main reason that i wanted to have him on is because he went in with one idea of how the challenge would affect him and it's completely changed his life so I thought it would be an interesting story for you guys especially since we're in the middle of our self-care series and I think this is ties in so beautifully with that so I don't know if you want to explain the 75 hard program what it is and yeah we can just go from there okay so um I basically got got listening to a guy called Andy Frisella he's in the United States um, he owns a company called First Form Nutrition and amongst other companies and so forth. And I started hearing about this program called 75 Hard and I, people from all over the world were doing it and there were great results were coming out and I just was intrigued to hear what, what it was all about. And the more I listened to it, the more I heard people changing their lives, their output, their outlooks on lives. And I thought, just let me, let me give this a go. But I was always the guy that would start training on Monday and then I would train throughout the week and then come Friday, I would hit the bar and <laughs> I'd be drinking till Sunday. <laughs> so then I'd be recovering till Tuesday, Wednesday. So and then I never stuck to anything really. So after about a year of listening to this and telling myself I'm going to do it, I one day just decided, no, no, 1st of May, I'm going to do it. And, and that's what happened. So let me explain 75 hard and, and what, it, what it's about. Um, so basically, it's a, it's a program. It, it entails two workouts, one indoors, one outdoors, both 45 minutes. It entails reading 10 pages of a nonfiction book. As much as I love Harry Potter, it's, that's not part of <laughs> my learning. Um, it also it entails a clean diet, so no cheat meals. It also entails um, a, a progression picture every day. <clears throat> um, that's yeah, that's and that's the that's the 75 hard part of it. And it's yeah, so, so when I started, it was it was tough at first because I wasn't used to training, never mind twice a day, but you know, once a day. Mm -hmm. So the body was sore, it was hurting, and you just gotta, you know, just gotta keep digging. But the main thing from the program, what I wanted to gather was I wanted to gain mental toughness. I wasn't focused on my body changing much. I was overweight, I was like a skinny fat guy. Mm -hmm. So there was no like you fat or you skinny, I was like a mixture. So like skinny with a boop. <laughs> which is even more unattractive I think <laughs> and you know it was so yeah so back to the so yeah I wanted to I wanted to get my mental sides tougher I wanted to I wanted to always talk about that bitch voice in your head when you oh should I make that call now I'll do it tomorrow or that email and I just wanted to get over that the voice controlling me and I wanted to start taking control of my own life mm -hmm. and yeah so I got started very much so and I started to yeah, after about a week or two I started getting into the, the motion of things and the, the stiffness started to wear off and so forth and so on. And as I started go, getting into it, I started to really change and the way I, you know, I started to feel good. I started to get up with energy. And you know, I, I was really, I started to get into it. Even friends of mine who know me as a jeweler and a drinker, they also started to like catch on and they were like, Josh, he's like, you're not drinking. This is not like you. And yeah, that kind of, it's, it went on from there. So anyway, so I finished the 75 hard program, which was, it was really tough. It wasn't easy. A lot of sacrifices were made. And I said to myself, okay, cool. Well, actually I got COVID directly afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really carry on training. All I wanted to do was train. I was like, no, I don't, I'm, I was feeling a bit down, but I wanted to train and I couldn't. So when I recovered from COVID, we decided to have a party. 
and you know, I'd had a drink in two and a half months. So we had, yeah, we had a couple of drinks, way too many. And I just, come Monday, I felt terrible. So I picked up my phone and I saw on the app that there's a, a, a phase one. So I was like, let me have a look what this is. And I clicked on it and basically it said, you're starting phase one of the Live Hard program. So now the Live Hard program is basically, so 75 Hard is the boot camp for the Live Hard program. Mm -hmm. So Live Hard is basically for the entire year. So if you start on the 1st of May, you need to finish on the 1st of May. Okay, so now the Live Hard program basically is 75 Hard. Once you finish 75 Hard, you can go straight into or wait for phase one. So phase one is the same facets of 75 Hard, plus you have to add in three... Um, critical tasks so say for instance you don't do the dishes or do something you don't do in your, in your daily life that's not a habit you do that as well plus on top of that you have to have a five minute cold shower and on top of that you have to do 10 minutes of active visualization so basically what that means is let me give you an example so if if a guy walks past a fancy house on the beach uh, some people would be like wow what kind of a doers would buy a house like that or shit he must have screwed people over to get a house like that mm -hmm. people that succeed in life will look at that and they'll visualize themselves in the house on the on the um sorry on that nice <laughs> they'll visualize themselves on the balcony having a cup of coffee you know so you have to actively visualize visualize what you want in life mm -hmm. so that you have to add in as well so it's a lot more tasks to do but they all they all have their their place yeah once you're done with phase one okay you have 30 days where you are free to do whatever you want you can drink you can cheat meals you don't have to train there's nothing that's going to going to penalize you so let me go back as well if you miss one of these tasks in 75 hard and in the phase one you start again in day one mm -hmm. okay so i mean you don't have to spend 60 days and then you make yeah. a mess up and you have to start again so yeah, then once phase one is done you basically now have to wait 30 days until phase two which is just 75 hard again so it's just the five chores from the first the first part once that is done okay you have to do phase three but phase three has to run within the last month of when you started so you have to finish on the first of may so it gives you a big gap in between mm -hmm. the reason why they do that is because people slide backwards when you don't have rules or a goal to train towards or a program to follow what are you going to do you're going to do whatever you want so that tech now that now this teaches you your proper mental toughness when you're allowed to go and do whatever you like, but are you you can decide are you going to go back or are you going to carry on this lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And what I found with myself is I've yeah, I've enjoyed the way I feel. It's changed my 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 um, <clears throat> my outlook on, on myself. It's given me true confidence versus false confidence when you're drunk and you, mm -hmm. you're putting on a persona. Um, so that's actually what I wanted to ask yeah. you. One of the first questions is. Obviously, you went into 75 hard with this whole idea that you're just going to gain mental toughness. But yeah. from like, obviously, me witnessing the whole transformation through all the phases and all of that, <clears throat> what actually do you think have been like, let's say, the top three benefits of following this program? Top three benefits. Okay, well, number one, I wouldn't say it's the top one, but my body changed a lot mm -hmm. because. I've done fitness competitions in the past where you you do four months of strict dieting this and that but i was always drinking on the weekends so now what i found with no drinking my body's changed completely differently mm -hmm. i've never had a abs before now i do and it wasn't my goal to get that i wasn't planning on getting that so that is a nice added that came with it like a cherry on <laughs> yeah <top>. exactly <laughs> but what and what i'm finding the next benefit for me is i'm i'm finding that i tasks in my life now that i i'm i'm doing I'm trying to make them harder. I'm trying to push myself into to do things that I wouldn't generally do. Mm. And um, it's like, if you if you go and you have 10 calls to make today, sure, now, tomorrow, I want to go make 15 calls because I want to be better than I was yesterday. Mm. It's teaching me to continuously grow and get better and better because I can push myself now. Yeah. So that's another thing that I found is it's been great. Also, I'm, I'm attracting more like-minded people, not even like-minded people, but even my own friends now are some way changing their ways as well not as much drinking not as much joining we're training on weekends together we're talking about business things versus how much drinking and whatever mm -hmm. we're doing over the weekends so everything's changed around me my the people around me are 
their energies changed, my vibrations changed, and it's kind of all leading to a better lifestyle, healthier mm. lifestyle. So those three are the main things I can think of the top of my head, but there's, I don't know, there's, it's endless. it's endless. Yeah. I love how you said it kind of pushes you, well, it's pushed you to want to be better every single day. Yeah. Um, where I know as before, you kind of were just like in the lull of life going day to day because that's just like what Correct. you had to do. Yeah. And I love how it's also started to almost rub off on your mates. Um because I think it's so it's so incredible how when someone sees someone doing so well, they are so mag magnetized towards that and almost want to like join in. Like, what are you doing? How are you like so happy and so vibrant and looking Correct. so good and Correct. like maintaining this lifestyle that you've created yeah. from this program? Um, so I think like if any of you guys want to take away a lesson from this is that you can really influence the people around you and influence them for the better right correct 100 percent. yeah yeah no, it's 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 nice to see um because everyone in this world has got issues and struggles and pain and during this these tough times with covid and what's happening around the world i wanted to give myself the best possible chance throughout the week to succeed even that that means just just surviving i mean that's apparently the new thriving surviving mm -hmm. so i just didn't want to feel terrible throughout the week because i wasn't i wasn't getting any better and you know it's not easy at the moment so for myself i wanted to give myself the best possible chance and now what's happening is my friends and stuff are also realizing shit you know, i'm also maybe using alcohol to cover certain things and i'm not dealing with things properly and they they also realize now oh should me come train with josh every day this is, he's lost a lot of weight he's looking good he's feeling good what's so what What's so, what's so wrong about this? Mm. And <clears throat> I'm also getting to a point where I've never really had balance in my life. So it's one or the other. And I know this might sound extreme what I'm doing. It is quite an extreme program, but I'm always been extreme. I'm ex <laughs> either extremely bad or extremely good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I'm not saying that I'm never going to drink again. Mm. I'm just going to do it a lot more consciously mm. and a lot less frequently. Yeah. I think we spoke about this on one of our previous podcasts is how we use drinking and going out and watching Netflix and all these other things that kind of like distract us from what's really going on. And I think one of the biggest lessons that a lot of people have taken away from all the hardships we faced over the past two years with everything that's going on is that you need to face your demons in order to overcome them. Correct. And by doing so, it makes you stronger. Yeah. And like I speak about this with all of my clients is if you don't face the fear, that fear will continuously grow and grow and grow in your mind. And you will get further and further away from facing it because you're building up this elaborate story in your head of how bad it's going to be and what's going to happen mm -hmm. if you face a specific Correct. fear. Instead of just facing it head on and being like, Oh shit, it actually wasn't really that bad. Yeah. So it's been incredible to watch you like go from not that you were lazy, but going from this like and demotivated. Is that a yeah, good word? Right. Demotivated right. in all aspects of your life to almost thriving in every single aspect of your life. And it's amazing how just sticking to a program of being healthy Correct. can do that for you. 100%. Yeah, because I was I was always looking for what business can I get involved in, what skill can I learn to get richer, or that and this, and I was just like, fuck, oh, sorry, sorry. yeah, of course. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I can't, I can't, like, I can't come up with anything. And what this has taught me is just focus on yourself, make yourself better, focus on your health, focus on your wellness, and the rest of the stuff will just fall into place because you can't go create if you're not well up here, if you're not well, mm. you're well. And so I've learned that if you can just focus on that, don't worry about anything else. Focus just on that and the rest of the stuff will fall into place as it should. Yeah. Because like if, if you look at it now, sometimes I'll get home and it's dark or it's raining outside and my workout has to be outside. Generally, I'd be like, nah, I'll train in the morning. This rain's not for me. Tomorrow is a, tomorrow's problem. Now I'm like, shit, no, go do it. Because hmm. you know what? When I go do it and I finish, shit, I, I, that, I, feel, I feel good. That's real confidence. Hmm. Not this fake confidence of telling yourself, lying to yourself. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train. Oh, but it's raining. Let me do it tomorrow. You lie to yourself. So at the end of the day, that's why you're not confident. That's why you've got anxiety because you're not being true to who you are. So if you go out there and you do the work and you come back inside while everyone else is inside, you feel good. You're like, dude, I'm actually working while people are sitting inside. Mm -hmm. So it creates a different way of thinking. Like in winter, when it's freezing, I have, at five o'clock, I'm at the gym. It's not nice in the beginning, but eventually I'm driving. There's no one in the road. There's no one in the gym. I'm like, dude, I'm working. 
or everyone else is sleeping. It gives you like a, a sense of achievement and accomplishment. Mm. So regardless of how my day goes from then on, I've done something that's going to better me. Yeah. So it's a nice feeling to, to have that. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I think like one of the main things we talk about a lot is like, if you cannot keep a promise to yourself yeah. or a plan that you make with yourself, it's going to filter through into every aspect of Correct. your life. So this is like case and point and yeah, exactly. everything of how like important it is to really just stick to the things you make, the plans you make for yourself. Yeah. And like you were saying, yeah, you say you're going to train when you get home and then it's cold yeah. or like, your wife's fighting with you or there's traffic or something yeah, comes up. There's always something there's that you're going to say. Your, your, your bitch voice in your head tells you, it always wants you to be comfortable. Okay. And this puts you out of your comfort zone. Now you only grow when you're out of your comfort zone, you're in uncomfortable situations. So you are 100% correct. <clears throat> we all, if the whole world is designed for you to be like, no, it's okay, don't worry, stay at home. Don't work on yourself, we'll look after you. And that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no one gonna look <laughs> no, after you but, but yourself. yourself. Exactly. <clears throat> Any other questions? So, yeah, I think, I mean, we've covered how it's like really helped you to build this yeah. kind of confidence that you never had before i want to delve a little bit deeper into that because obviously we all put on these like fake personas that mm -hmm. we think give us confidence um or use things to give us this fake sense of confidence but i want to know like now after this program how how do you feel like how has it made you feel more confident? Like, how, how can you compare your old confidence that you used to get through drinking and whatever it may be to the confidence that you have now? Like, what's different? It's a lot quieter. It's within myself. I don't have to tell you and show, and like, I don't have to tell you, I'm, I can do this for you, I can do that for you. It's, I can walk into a room, I can be quiet, I can listen to everyone, and I can just know within myself that this is this is achievable i don't have to walk up and tell you my plans and this is this is the best part i don't have to tell you anymore which i'm finding i'm a lot more like reserved and quiet to myself because i want to listen and i want to understand whereas before i had to almost prove to everyone in the room how good i am or what i can do mm. whereas now i don't have to go and prove it to them and i've realized that's real confidence they don't have to know but i have to know i, I know yeah because we've, before it was, it was there but it wasn't it wasn't real yeah and especially if you're going out and you socialize everyone knew me as the life of the party no, I'm sure it is, it's all fun and games, but it, it wasn't real though. At the time I thought it was real, but it's, it's definitely not. Cause when I wake up and I'm like, shit, I had a conversation with this guy about that. <laughs> that is absolute bullshit. I, I was lying to him. He, yeah. well, he thinks I'm a hero, but meanwhile, I'm just a, I'm a fake, I'm a phony. I love that you say that because it brings back like the whole thing between external validation and internal validation. Yeah. And I mean, obviously as humans, we brought up in a society where we place more importance on external validation rather than internal validation. And 100%. that's where all this unhappiness comes from because we're constantly chasing approval, chasing, um, yeah. yeah, basically 100%. any kind of validation from anyone but ourselves. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like you should be the only person that can judge yourself, that can validate yourself. So I love that you mm. brought that up because I think, that's where so many people suffer. They're constantly doing this because it'll make their parents happy it'll, or it'll make their friends think they're cool. cool yeah. um, and at the end of the day, they go to bed just feeling like shit because they're constantly chasing the next way to make themselves feel validated. Correct. Where at the end of the day, like you should be the only one who cares about exactly. 100%. What, your, what success is and what yeah. happiness is because yeah. at the end of the day, all of that stuff does come from within. 100%. It's like if you if you think about it and you you can be out there doing a workout one man by yourself mm. no one's around you no one can see what you're doing so for some people that's that that's not ideal they want to go to gym where it's, there's just chicks everywhere so they mm. can show off and sure i was like this i was like that as well but i'm finding that like doing hard things in your own space in your own mind and trying to get better and push yourself even further that's creating a real confidence i'm not there yet not by any chance it's a journey. It's a journey, but I'm slowly <laughs> starting to understand it and, and, and work through it. Mm. Yeah. But the, the world we live in is all about, like you said, the external, how people see you, mm. what car you have, um, how many likes you get, how many shares you get, all of that jazz. 
And there's nothing wrong with being told that you're pretty or you're good looking or you're a good person. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. We all, we all, we all thrive off that. And as soon as someone tells you, you do feel that sense of wow, that's that's great. Mm. But I think people put too much emphasis on what other people think about them, what they're doing, versus what you feel about yourself. Mm. So you end up in a career or something that's not for you, but you'll end up why? Why am I so happy? Why is why is the suicide rate so high? Why why is all this happening? Because a lot of people aren't taking the time to work on themselves, but the but the deep work. It doesn't come from someone telling you how great you are for you to feel good. You need to go into the trenches and and figure it out for yourself. Yeah, definitely. I think you hit on two valid points there. It's like we're always chasing these external um, things that we think will make us happy, like having a nice car or a big house or lots of money in the bank. But those are the people who have like the highest suicide rates because you get Mm -hmm. home and yes, you have all these awesome things but you're still lonely. Like you still have no internal confidence. You still have no passion, no desire, no purpose because you spent your life chasing these things that you think are going to make you happy, but it's so fleeting. Like how many times, I don't know, and you guys can think about it as well. How many times have you like been dying to get something, some material object, whether it's a new car or a new outfit or a new cell phone. And you think life's going to be so much better when you get it. And you get it and you know, it's cool for like yeah. 10 minutes, one day, one week. And then you're thinking about the next thing that you want. Correct. So it's so important to go within and figure out what it is that will truly make you happy. And at the end of the day, I think what truly makes you happy are the feelings that you get from being fulfilled. And being fulfilled is being confident within yourself, having yeah. relationships that are yeah. real, having... Things a purpose that fulfills you there's so many more there's so much more to life than material yeah like don't get me wrong I, I i'm all about making money and yeah I, nice houses cars I, I want all of that but i'm not putting that above my my self-worth my my um it's not my end goal if i if i never have it i'll be okay hmm. but i still i still try i strive to to achieve things like that but it doesn't i'm not doing it for any other for any other reasons i used to Get the cool GTR. I think all the chicks would dig me. I race every car. Guess what? Every Oak's got a GTR. Not one chick looked at me. <laughs> all I did was expend money yeah. that I didn't have to impress people. Don't give me wrong. I can buy a car like of my dreams. I'm going to. But yeah. now I'll do it for, the, for different reasons, for the right reasons. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is yeah. like you can still have all these grand dreams of like material items because, yeah, it's nice. It's yeah. nice to have things that you enjoy and Correct. that you Correct. you... Yeah, you know, basically that you enjoy. If you but like, if you like certain things, then go your, do it. Yeah, but don't base your no, worth correct. on it. Correct. Exactly. Like I'm not going to go put myself into a situation to buy a car to impress somebody else because mm. he likes the car. Mm. I mean, now I would for old Josh definitely. Yeah. Would take another second credit card. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. If I if I want something and I work hard towards it, that's going to be my reward. Mm. Yeah, I think Does that's that why sense? I always tell people like when you're setting goals ask yourself why you want that and then ask yourself why you want that again and really dig down to your deepest why because firstly a lot of people set goals that have nothing to do with them like they want to lose weight because they want the sky to notice them yeah. there's nothing to do with you and I mean let me tell you one thing it's probably not going to work um but if you want to lose weight because at the end of the day you want to feel more comfortable or gain more confidence or just fit into the clothes that you used to because you know it'll make you feel happier then those are the kind of goals you need to go for not because you want like john at the gym to notice you and maybe they'll get married and have six kids and live happily ever after (laughs) no 100 that's great okay so another thing i wanted to talk about because i think it's been such an amazing thing to to see is how this has affected our relationship yeah big time yeah because you've always been um personal trainer yeah more on the spiritual side i've been like sales mm-hmm. guy party <laughs> and i also like to, no, go party. Like to party. No, you don't. i know you do <laughs> and i think i think it was getting to a point where obviously you wouldn't tell me but like you eventually did <laughs> but like eventually all this drinking and stuff there could be the it could be our downfall yeah and i remember that day obviously it still took me about a year after that to make the decision <laughs> but i did but yeah, i think it's it's definitely it's brought us closer we've we used to have like fights when obviously we were drinking about stupid things um your uh, alter ego sasha fierce used to come out mm-hmm. my ego of never being wrong or being a right self-righteous came out 
half the time I didn't remember what we were fighting about. Um, we were never been a big fighting couple. We've mm. always made up pretty quickly. But since the things have changed, it's yeah, we've we've almost kind of gravitated on the on the same path now. We like. I'm more tapped into my spiritual side because of you. And I enjoy doing things like that because it's completely different. It's getting me in touch with a, certain, a different part of me that I didn't know. Mm. Um, you've always been active with the training. And I've been like, listen, it's Saturday. I don't even drink coffee on a Saturday. I only drink beer. So now it's like we wake up, we train every day. We train outdoors. We look for hiking activities. We're doing things together, which we've, we've always done things together, but we're doing things that are bettering us together. Mm. We're talking about businesses. We're talking about how, how we can better ourselves physically mentally can we sure we go on holidays instead of going let's go to a place where there's a bar let's go places where we can go and hike and mm. places where we can go explore so it's changed that because it's all changed in that way and yeah it's it's definitely brought us closer yeah i just also think that if what's happening now if, if say for instance something bad had to happen and around us whatever i think we would we would handle it a lot better as a team versus yeah i was gonna say i think the quality of our relationship yes. has improved in terms yeah. of communication, I think that's mm -hmm. been a big thing. We actually take time now to plan our future and to talk about the things that like scare yeah. us and um, you know, basically like, like stuff you kind of avoid in even like the we, uncomfortable we, stuff. You were like, let's do a let's do this <laughs> one night where we have this crazy sex thing. It's like this, <laughs> this guru sex that I'm like, yes, yeah, I'm gonna get it on, it's gonna be fantastic. We literally spoke, staring, I just stared into Rox's eyes for an hour and speak about things, how I felt, what I'm scared of. And that for a guy is not, not easy to do, but it was actually amazing. Mm -hmm. It was quite a, it was a, such a nice experience to like tell, you know, to be vulnerable and talk about your, your feelings and how, what scares you, what doesn't scare you. Mm. I think that's something like. But I would never have agreed to that. Yeah, that's before. What, I mean, like, it wasn't like you tricked me, but I didn't know it was no sex. It was just, just talking. <laughs> Fooled you. <ya. laughs> No, but I think like people always ask us like what the, the key to having a successful relationship is. And I think like the biggest component to for success in a relationship is like good communication and not mm -hmm. just communicating what your plans are on the weekends, but like talking about the hard stuff. Like Josh is saying mm -hmm. this date night, I also didn't realize it yeah. was <laughs> going to be that deep. <laughs> um but it was such a good thing to do like we spoke about our fears we spoke about um what we loved about each other what we admired about each other and not just like in the physical realms but like how we, what we love about them like mentally mm -hmm. and spiritually so i think that was like such a beautiful experience that we had just to go a little bit off the point yeah, yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> if you guys want to do that i'll try link it in the show notes mm -hmm. um but yeah also just the way we like you were saying we we look for experiences now we don't just kind of drink yeah. our weekends away before it was like who can we go drink with this weekend and then wake up on a sunday feeling shit and start the week all over again exactly. and now we're like let's do a date night on friday let's go for dinner let's maybe plan for the week ahead or the month ahead or even for yeah. the year ahead exactly. like what do you what are you hoping to achieve what am i hoping to achieve correct like playing with the dogs in the garden. But like things we're doing now are things you can are going to add value to your life. Mm. Okay, so instead of we, on a weekend, we'll say, let's go for a hike somewhere or do something like that. We, you're not only working on your cardio, but you're out in nature. You're getting vitamin D from the sun. You're getting fresh air. You're seeing trees, birds, nature. It's good for your mind to get out of the hustle bustle and all the energy around here. So things like that are, are just, are just new, are things that I'm, you're adding on. Hmm. whereas before like it, your experiences are what okay oh we've got a job this weekend guess, <laughs> guess what happens now i've got to go buy an outfit i've got to get a new vest new am i right i mean mm. how many new clothes you go buy that i, I i'm taking my shirt off in anyways so it's gonna get lost you're gonna you spend a couple of grand on shades you get to the play uh, so i was i'm taking that energy now and mm -hmm. using it in a more productive way yeah definitely yeah so I, every weekend now i'm actually making myself better so, I'll, so instead of having a good week of work and training and then screwing it up over the weekend mm. i'm constantly getting better and better and better yeah and it's enjoyable stuff yeah, it's course. not like we're sticking to the strict routine where we no. have to do hikes because we have to get our workout in no. like doing stuff that really like adds to our quality of life Correct. and adds to your memory bank i think that's it exactly yeah, but I think the biggest thing I've noticed with us is our, our communication has just thrived. Mm. We really do talk more about things we never even used to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Like we had quite a pivotal night where we spoke about something that we both didn't see eye to eye on. 
But instead of reacting and getting angry with each other, we explained why we saw it in our own ways. And that I think is mm-hmm. kind of like catapulted us into this new thing about speaking about all this kind of Correct. not spiritual stuff, but just the things that really matter. And I'm I'm loving that. Yeah, for sure. 100 percent mm. <clears throat> Sorry, clear my throat. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, so yeah, I think. I mean, the reason I wanted to have you on was just because there's been so much, yeah. so much transformation in more ways than you could have even imagined. Yeah, I mean, I, I just thought, cool, this is a nice thing. He's not going to drink for 75 days. In the train. <laughs> like it's going to help him to focus and maybe just like, yeah, just be more motivated. But there really has been a bazillion other benefits that I've seen. Definitely. And it's just been beautiful to watch. Correct. I mean, I don't know if there's anything else that stood out for you throughout this program if you, if you, and things you'll take forward with you. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at look at the situation where we were, okay, people were all locked in their houses, people were locked down, and a lot of people didn't take that opportunity to to grow. You didn't take the opportunity to learn a new skill or, a, or a, I mean, the whole world went online. No one, a lot of people did, and a lot of people are succeeding from that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people didn't, okay? They sat on the couch, they ate Cheetos, they drank more and they got fat and lazy and then they got depressed and then the whole world was against them and i was thinking shit this is going to be a lot of people okay oh that's so terrible because of covid but i'm thinking now i'm like no that's you make your own decisions mm-hmm. that regardless of what's happening around you you have a, if you i mean we lived in a one a bedroom apartment okay? yeah we could, 47, 47 squares <laughs> you, you can't do much in there so you no. do a couple of push-ups and you do your thing but you can find ways to train you can always so you so for instance okay I think it's a good idea if you are in a lockdown or you're in a situation where you're working from home where you're always stuck behind a PC or whatever, try 75 hard. I mean, you can work in your garden. You can work in your living room. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to a gym if you don't have a gym contract. But if you can, get out to a gym, you can. Yeah. Go for a walk. You don't have to go for a run. Go for a 45-minute walk. Yeah, I think that's the biggest misconception with the program, especially in the beginning. It was like, geez, like two hard workouts every day. Correct. You can go for a walk for 40 minutes. If you are a person if you're a person that's very overweight and you can't you can't run, go walk. Get Mm -hmm. to a point where your walking is easy, then you can run. Run to put one to run run to one post to walk the rest. Mm -hmm. Eventually you get to a point where you can run the entire thing. Yeah. It's not it's not like there's a rule of how you should train or what you should eat. If you're a guy looking to put on a bit of size. You, you can have a nice high calorie diet. Just don't stray off that diet. Stick to your diet. Mm. If you wanted to lose weight, like what I do is when I'm on my 30 days or whatever, I cut out, say, your butter, uh, dairy, cheese, sugar completely, chocolate, anything like that, I cut out. When I'm not on 75 hard, I still don't do that. I still don't eat any of that. But what I might do is I might add dark chocolate to my protein pancakes I make. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is, there are such healthy foods out there that you can use in certain ways. I mean, I freeze oranges. It's like a, it's like a sorbet. Mm. So there are th- ways that you can make your healthy foods um, and your training fun. Yeah. Okay. Because after th- three months of doing something like that, when you, you're eating only clean, unprocessed foods, you don't realize how, what it's doing to your body. It's creating, I mean, th- with the coronavirus going around, people need to be healthy. You need your yeah. immunity to be up. Regardless of if you're taking vaccines or not, mm. it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, your natural yeah. immunity can really help you. If you even if you are vaccinated, take do both. Mm. Why not put good food into your body? Exercise. I mean, you're giving yourself the best fighting chance to succeed in life and to fight whatever's going on out there. Yeah. So yeah, if if I was someone that's in a situation where you're not too sure, you're going through a bit of anxiety, depression, you're unsure of what you're gonna do. Don't worry about what you're gonna do. Just focus on yourself. Mm. try to do the program um, if you can do one day okay do day i go day by day don't i don't think about oh next week mm. is a wedding or and that's a big problem a lot of guys and myself included i won't start this diet because oh there's a there's a i've got a birthday coming up in two weeks i have to drink if you're going to be like that you're never going to start yeah it's like the you endless never, loop of making excuses com- it's always an excuse it doesn't matter i mean i went to my dad's farm four times i mean that i don't even remember the farm generally yeah. And I was training there, running up hills. You can do it. You can you really mm. can. So if you are struggling out there and you're not sure of what to do and you're looking at this business or that, just try try to do this and see yeah. how everything else will fall in pla- into place. Yeah. Listen, guys, I did not do 75 hard, <laughs> but I think like learning from from watching hubby, like you don't have to do 75 no. hard. 
But if you can even just put five new healthy things you want to include in your life for the next 30 days, let's say, and that's non-negotiable. Like you're saying, it doesn't matter if you get invited to a friend's bra and they've bought all drinks and it's free on the house. No, (laughs) been there. Been there, like... Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole premise of doing what you say you're going to do. That's correct. Keeping your promise to yourself. Like you you should be the most important person in your life because you are going to be the only constant person. Correct. I mean, I can sit on my phone and tick off all the stuff. No one will know that I didn't do it. Only I'm the only person that knows that I did it properly. Mm. So if I'm going to lie to myself on an app, guess what? You might as well put the phone down and just carry on with your life because you're never going to get better. Yeah. So I agree with you there. Stick to something, even if it's five things. Yeah. Okay. I've also, we've done 30 day things, 20 or two day challenges. I've never felt a habit really stick after that. Yeah. The three months that we did this, they, they pretty much stuck. Those habits yeah. were there. I'm not ad- advocating go do three months, whatever. I'm just saying, but if you yeah. can add in 30 days of constantly doing something, why, why stop at 30 days? Carry on going. Like, yeah, well, you can, you, you can carry say. on it and then you'll start to see. I promised myself that and I went to a party, I didn't drink. When you leave that party, it might be tough when you're there, but when you leave, and you get home and you don't have to worry about cops pulling you over or a hangover the next day and everyone else is feeling like shit and you feel fresh and you're at the gym, you feel good. Mm. You said no to free alcohol, free food that wasn't on your diet. Listen, it sacrifices, but in order to grow and to become better, you need to sacrifice. Nothing ever has come easy. I think Unless, it builds resilience as yes, well. Yes, 100%. Because when times are not always easy, when times are bad, a lot of people give up. Yeah. This teaches you shit, okay? This is not easy. Figure out a way. Yeah. I think it takes you from being like in the victim, yep. the victimhood to like just realizing you can take control back of your life. That's like you great. are the only one who can control only your life. One. No one's coming to save you. Yeah. So yeah, like if you can just put a list right now after this podcast, yeah. if you're driving, don't do it. But it, like when you get home, <laughs> write a list of five things that you've oh. always wanted to do. And whether it's a month or three months. Sure just stick to it and like josh said like you don't have to think of the whole 30 days ahead of you it's just taking one day at a time and i promise you it is going to boost your morale it's going to boost your confidence not only in your like confidence that you carry with you but the confidence that you have in yourself that's the most important um and once you've got that confidence and you've realized that you can stick to something like Who's to say what's gonna come next? Like yeah, it's just exactly. gonna make you so successful in literally everything that Correct. you do. And and when you do these 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 tasks, whatever you want to do, don't make them easy. Push yourself, challenge yourself. Mm. And your everyone's is different. It doesn't have to be the most extreme thing in the world. But do things that you don't generally do. Yeah. Like you put yourself out of that comfort zone. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I mean, you're gonna choose five tasks that you are comfortable doing. Say you want to go to the some guys go to the gym and they agree, they enjoy doing arm curls. Cool, but you're not good at doing your legs, so go try your legs. No, it's not easy to go squat, but you know, eventually you'll build mm. that muscle. Same thing with the task. I don't like doing the dishes, so I'll do the dishes. Kind of. Yeah, well, that's something that's you right. can add on your list of things to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be hard. No, it doesn't have to be hard. But maybe if like you never make your bed, like that's yeah. something that's going to instill good, Correct. good routine and habit in you. How are you going to make millions and millions of dollars or rands if you can't make your own fucking bed? Yeah. Yeah, you know and I'm saying it's something small. It's a small little task you do every day that becomes mm-hmm. a habit, and it's something that's going to make. When you walk into the room and your bed's all messy, it's like cut in your head. You're like, "What is mm-hmm. this?" You walk in your bed's made. You're like, oh, "Okay, nice." It's something small. Yeah, there's so much power actually in having a clean space because mm-hmm. it just distracts you from everything else. Mm-hmm. I actually said this on the workshop I hosted the other night. I was like, making space, not just physically but energetically um is so important but for me because i work from home the first thing i do every morning is walk through the house and make sure it's clean because otherwise i'm going to walk through the house every second and be like oh i need to do that oh i need to do that that's irritating me and it completely distracts you from having a productive day because you kind of still have all these things to to do on your to-do list but you you don't really want to do them but if you just do them in the morning and get them over with that's something that that won't even cross your mind and you can be more productive because Mm -hmm. there's nothing distracting you from that exactly yeah yeah so i just wanted to say like if you in closing whatever it's it's really been something that i'm probably gonna keep doing this for the foreseeable future um a year, two years. This, I mean, the last. This is a nice lifestyle for me. Mm. It, it works with my with my psyche. I've always been a person that's got seriously bad anxiety. A lot of people don't even know I've got social anxiety. 
because I'm a very social person, but I feel physically ill going to crowds of people. So this is something that I'm going to keep doing for the rest of my life. I'm not going to cut out alcohol completely. Obviously, if I'm in my phases, there's nothing. But if we go for dinner and there's a celebration, who's to say, why can't I have three or four glasses of wine? There's nothing wrong with that. I just need to, I've, I've got to a point where I really enjoy how I feel right now. And yeah. I don't want to go back to that Josh that yeah. was weak-minded, fake this, you know, don't fit my pants nicely, <laughs> my stomach hangs over my... <laughs> You know, not always sitting at the office. Oh, today's a Monday. Let me let me just turn my phone off. I don't reply to mails. I don't feel well. Mm. That's, I don't want that anymore. So I'm not going back that way. And I can, I can see myself doing this for years. It's, you can do it. You, you can do it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to I stick have to, to the no, extremeness no. of the two workouts and everything, but do the stuff that makes you feel good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you watch and you research the most successful people in the world, they have a routine that they stick to every day. Mm -hmm. They are healthy. Yep. And I mean, there was even this video I watched the other day. You were saying if you are at the top of your game mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, then your success within whatever career or business that you run is gonna come, it's gonna come yeah. naturally because you are performing at your best in every other aspect of your life. Correct. So if that doesn't change your mind, nothing will. Yeah. And also if you want to go check out properly, so you, my, my description isn't very good, <laughs> but you can just check out his website. I think it's a, Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. In the show. He's got everything. He explains all of it for you. Uh, the phases, walks, talks it through it. It's, uh, it's really, it's not for everyone. He's, mm -hmm. very, um, he's very masculine, very aggressive in his way, but it resonates with me. Yeah, um, and I mean, you don't have to even listen he, to him. You don't have to listen to him, to but look, <laughs> I mean, if you are looking for a serious challenge, a lot of people have even said that this is harder than doing Ironman. It's harder than doing bodybuilding competitions because there's no cheat meals. There's no days mm. off. You don't take days off. And obviously, after the thing you take off, but during, you don't, there's no compromise. You don't compromise for anything. And that's, yeah, it's not for everyone. But I can promise you now, if you are in a situation where you're not sure and you want to try something new, just give it a bash. Mm. I mean, if, if you can do one day, you can do all the days. Yeah, well, you that's find a way thing. to do it. Mm. You can be traveling, whatever. You find a way to do it. Wake up an hour earlier. Wake up at three o'clock to do it if you have to. Mm. Train at 12 at night if you have to. But you can do it. It will, <laughs> it will definitely change your life. And that I can guarantee. If you do it properly, don't, you don't cheat through it or skim through it. You really stick to it and do it properly. It will change your life. Uh, and I don't get paid by this, Andy. I wish, I wish I did, but I'm not. I'm promoting it generally, generally because it, it helped my life and it, it changed my life for the for the better. Yeah, I love that, and I think that's why this fits in so perfectly for, with our self care series because you'll see as the weeks go by and we delve into more categories. But it's so important to put yourself first, to look after yourself, to make sure that you are feeding yourself with the healthiest foods and mm. with the healthiest thoughts and just like keeping a daily, weekly, monthly routine, whatever it is to keep yourself performing at your top, whether it's mentally, emotionally, in your career, in your relationships, just when those things run smoothly and at like their optimum, life just is so much easier and so mm -hmm. much more enjoyable. Correct. Because mm -hmm. life's not easy, let's be honest. Yeah. Everyone talks about a hard life and it's not, it's not out there and it's not, no one's out there to make your life easier. People are out there for themselves. So give yourself the best fighting chance possible. And yeah, also just be a good person. <laughs> do good, send out love and you'll be all right. Yeah, do everything from the heart. Correct. Awesome. Well, thank you for sitting in for my, my B. <laughs> but um, it's been incredible listening to a story. I just really wanted people to see the power of putting yourself first and really committing to something that'll push you out of your comfort zone, but will build so much mental toughness, That's so it. much resilience. And Correct. in doing that, so much happiness that will come and flow from that in, Correct. in doing that. Happy days. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We will catch you next week. Back to the regular. Thanks so much for listening. We love you.